And good morning again. Welcome to 60 Minute Vinyan. I hope this practice will help you today. We're focusing on shoulders, low back, and hip opening. So begin on your back. Wiggle in and adjust your body until you feel your shoulder blades are completely flat and cradled by your mat. Inhale deeply. Audibly sigh it out. Observe the tone of your nervous system. And watch how the tone shifts with every exhalation. Your body sinking deeper into your mat space. Noticing how your belly lifts and expands as you inhale. How your body softens and sinks on your exhalation. Relax your brow, the space around your eyes, your cheeks, jaw, throat, and shoulders. are in a place of healing. And if there's something in your life that's calling out for healing, you can place one hand on your heart, the opposite hand on your belly. And visualize taking in strength with the in-breath. And using your exhale as a conduit of healing to that space, either physical, relational, or your heart space. One more breath of healing. And slowly come back to awareness. Rest your hands on the floor, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Circle both hands and feet. Getting out the kinks. If your body's propped up, maybe removing your prop. Lying completely flat on the floor. Take a good morning stretch. Raise your arms overhead. Reach for the opposite wall behind you. Point your toes. Arch your back slightly. Press your tailbone into the ground. As you exhale, step your feet onto your mat and gather just your right knee in. Check out how your low back feels. Flex and point through your right ankle. Create circles with your foot, just your foot. Check out your range of motion. Reverse your circle every time you come back to beginning. Notice if your circles are oblong or oddly shaped. It just shows you where you may need a little bit more attention 
for range of motion. Flex and point through your ankle, hug in a little more tightly, press your tailbone down, hug your knee in a little bit closer, press your tailbone down a little bit more. And release right foot down, flat on the floor with your knee bent. Take your left knee into hand. You can either hook your hands behind or on top of your knee and begin the same slow circles with your foot. One direction and reverse. Even if your eyes are closed, you can see the shape that your toes are making. If it's a perfect 360 degree circle, that's amazing. But many of you have lived quite a life with lots of steps. So there's natural places in your range of motion that are naturally weak just from what you, what you like to do. Again, this is just a diagnostic tool. It's nothing more. Flex and point through your toes, your entire foot, and relax your foot. Hug your leg in just a little closer to your belly and press your tailbone down. You're getting just a little bit more length out of your spine that way. Press down and elongate through your tailbone. How about one more time, compressing your thigh in. Good for your immune system, good for your digestion, good for your hip. And release. Slide your feet towards your seat. Bring your palms onto the ground. A little bridge flow here. Take a breath in. As you exhale, lift your hips up. Keep your palms down. Tuck your chin. Press the back of your neck down. Compressing your thyroid. Good for metabolism. Slowly articulate your spine down. As you do so, raise your arms up. Palms facing one another. Thumbs will touch the floor behind you. Arch your back slightly. Exhale, tuck your tail, lift your hips. Bring your arms down as your hips go up. This is brain work, opposite motion of your body. Lower your hips, lift your arms. We'll do this a couple more times, warming up the low back, the spine, and the brain. Anytime you confuse yourself with your body motions, happens a lot, you're creating neural pathways that jump across the brain's hemisphere. One more time, flowing your bridge on your own breath, the inhalation, you find expansion and exhale, contraction as you lift your hips and lower your arms. Hold your bridge, take the bind underneath if you want. Wiggle your arms closer together underneath your body, interlace your fingers if you wish, Give your chin a little tuck, compressing your thyroid. Try to tear your fingers apart, engaging the shoulders. Relax your brow, squeeze your glutes, relax your toes, wiggle your toes. Release your bind, lower your spine down inch by inch. Gather your knees in, feel how lovely it is to stretch that body part. Roll your body up maybe reaching forehead toward knees tuck your chin a little spinal stretch lie back and roll to face the screen prop yourself up onto your elbow good shoulder and elbow alignment make sure that your elbow is in the letter l shape once you are on your side bend your knees you can put your hand on your waist as you exhale, press your hips off the ground and lower. We'll do this about three to four more times. Up and down motion. If you want, you can take your hand and feel the obliques working. You'll notice your outer hip begin to warm. You're turning on the psoas, which is wonderful for your standing postures later. Hold, lift, 
stay lifted, maybe add a leg raise. Lower everything down, nice work, roll to your belly. Lower all the way down with your palms on the ground. Untuck your toes, lift your upper body up, roll your shoulders. I'm going to adjust the volume. Just a couple of easy shoulder rolls. And as you work here, notice what muscles are working to keep you lifted. Nice work, Scott. Lower down. Stack your hands. Rest your forehead on your stacked hands. Extend through your right leg. Point your right toes and lift just your right leg up. Lower. Extend left and lift left. Lower. Extend both toes long. Get another inch and lift both legs off the ground. Squeeze your legs together. Notice how that changes what you're feeling. Hold on your locust. Slide your hands out to the edges of your mat. Squeeze your elbows in. Lift your heart. Lift your legs. Keep your gaze long. Nice long neck. Lift your hands off the ground. Roll your shoulders. As you roll your shoulders, lift your upper body just another inch. Twice more. Such strong work for your back and your core. Hold locust. Lower down, press back to child's pose. Stretch your arms forward. Bring your fingertips close enough together so that your thumbs touch. Rock side to side. You'll notice your body pulls up slightly as you move to the side. And when you go center, it naturally dips. Continue that little U-shaped movement. What you're doing is you are stretching the obliques, the lats, but you're moving your spine side to side too, opening and closing the vertebra. So good for spinal fluid. Once you come center, you can hold your child's pose extended, or if there's something you're feeling grateful for, you can bring your palms together and rest your prayer hands in the back of your neck Breathing in all that's good in your life. BKS Iyengar says, breathing in, we take in strength from God. The exhalation is our service to others. Release your prayer hands. Coming up to table pose, slide your palms under your shoulders for cat-cow practice. Look at your knees, bring them hip distance apart. Press the mat away, tuck your chin, tuck your tail, hold cat. Press palms down and apart. Feel how your shoulders kick in. Move to cow, lift your tailbone, lift your gaze, press your palms down and drag your palms towards your knees, resist by pressing your knees down and towards your palms. Lift, exhale, tuck, tuck, press up, press your palms down and apart. Inhale, lift your tail, lift your gaze, drag palms and knees toward one another, never moving an inch. One more time, using your mat as a prop is so powerful. It's naturally sticky, and when you use it as a resistance tool, you can go deeper into these simple, effective poses. Come to neutral table, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. Press your seat up and back. Immediately start walking your dog. That intuitive motion that gets into your Achilles tendon. Spread your fingers wide apart. Use your mat. Press your palms down and slightly forward. You'll notice this turns on your shoulder girdle causing your shoulders to become not only safer, but stronger. After a few times, pumping your heels up and down, wagging your tail, wiggling your head, opening your jaw, 
Look backward. Walk your hands back to your feet. Stay in a forward fold. Point your toes out. See that your heels are in. Drop your seat down in a molasses squat. And then straighten your legs. Not forcing anything, of course, just easily moving down and up. You're telling your hamstrings it's okay to lengthen. The next time you are upside down and your legs are straight, point your toes forward, heel toe your feet together, and dangle. Maybe bending one knee and then the other. You'll feel the outer edges of your thigh begin to stretch and open. That's your IT band. Keep both knees soft. Walk your hands onto your thighs. Straighten your back. Gaze just beyond your mat. Hold here. Press your feet down and apart. Notice what changes. Relax. Press your feet down and apart. Relax your toes this time. Hold here. Extend your arms back behind you, palms facing down. Bring your pinkies even closer together, that scapular stabilization, that strong shoulder building as you stay here in your half lift. Forward fold, exhale, feel the relief. Your body's ready, come to standing, slow, slow, slow. And as you do so, spread your wings, press your wings backward, lift your heart as if your arms are coming up an imaginary glass wall behind you that strength and that slow intensive movement opening up your heart slide your thumbs to heart center inhale sweep your arms back slow press back and up when your palms come together forward fold exhale inhale halfway up like you're diving reach behind you palms down squeeze your pinkies together light toes forward fold exhale Look forward, walk your hands forward. Coming to plank pose, drop your knees down, untuck your toes, hug your elbows into your ribs. Press your chest forward, upward facing dog, gazing over one shoulder and then the opposite. The serpentine movement side to side. It's addressing tightness in the front of your hips. The next time you look over a shoulder, gaze forward, tuck your toes, press back through child and up to down dog. Walking out your dog. Gaze forward, tiptoe or hop or maybe even pike forward, whatever you're ready for. You can pump up your practice as much as you want today. Lifting up halfway, dive, strong shoulder blades, forward fold, exhale. Slowly coming up, gathering in all that's good between your palms and straight to heart center. Inhale, open. Exhale, forward fold. Coming up halfway, dive. Forward fold, touch the ground. How grateful are you for your mat? All the way back to plank, knees down optional. Chaturanga, untuck your toes, press your heart forward, gazing up slightly, tuck your toes, right back to downward facing dog walk it out begin to feel the beat of your practice through your breathing one more time through your a gaze forward tipping tippy toe or hopping forward inhale halfway tearing the mat apart with your feet reaching back everything's intentional forward fold exhale inhale rise pressure straight arms backward and up Exploring range of motion in your shoulder joint as you take in your blessings. Forward fold, exhale. Coming up halfway, dive strong. Maybe eyes are closed at this point. Every move familiar and yet brand new. Stepping back to plank, to chaturanga. Upward facing dog, knees down or up. And either resting in child's pose or exploring your downward facing dog. Why did you come to the mat today? Initially, it's maybe to take down your stress level, which is a beautiful reason to come to your mat. But over time, that builds. There's so many beautiful things that come from exploring 
your body, your breath, your movement. So take three more breaths mindfully, connecting with the reason you're here. Press back to downward facing dog if you're not already there. Walk it out. Gaze forward, hop or tiptoe to the top of your mat. Inhale, coming up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise, shine, palms together, thumbs to heart center. Step to face your screen, both toes pointing forward. Open your arms to a T, eagle arm practice. Sweep your right arm in front of your body. Cross your left arm on top. Bend your elbows, they're cradling each other. Your shorter hand will come toward you, tall hand goes away, enabling you to get the second wrap. If that's not happening, you hug yourself. So, eagle arm practice, step your feet wide apart, toes out, heels in, bend your knees, bring your elbows in, press your pinkies away, bring your thumbs towards you, lift your elbows up. Let's do that again, elbows down, pinkies away, thumbs towards you, elbows up, release, open wide, palms up, touch your palms above your head. Second side, eagle arms lower down, left arm comes across your body, right arm on top. Elbows are cradled now. The short hand comes towards you, the long hand goes away. And then recross or hug yourself. How are your toes? Are they light or are you gripping for dear life because your legs are tired? Relax your toes. Press your pinkies away. Lift your elbows up. Bring your thumbs in. Bring your elbows down. Pinkies away. Elbows up. Thumbs in. Elbows down. Release, open, and slowly come to standing. Touch your palms above your head. Samastitihi, palms together. Hop your feet together. Turn. And as you set up for pyramid, step your right foot back. A nice straight spine. Lift your arms up. As you exhale, flip your palms, bend your elbows, press your bent elbows backward, all the way down to your ribs. Once your elbows are in, straighten your arms. This is opening a small muscle in the front of your chest. Press your arms backward as you raise your arms up. Notice which arm feels a little less willing or is shaking. Front leg is straight. Bend your elbows. Bring your bent elbows to your ribs. Straighten your arms. Splay your fingers wide apart as you lift your straight arms up. Hold here. Palms face in. Stepping into warrior one. Body, your belly is facing forward. Bend your front leg. Tuck your chin. Reach forward so slowly. Reach your arms backward, lift your pinkies as high as they'll go, lock out your elbows. Inhale, lift, this is sort of a humble flow. Palms facing each other, exhale. Exhalations naturally tone your belly, protecting your spine. Inhale, lift, release the grip of your toes, work against your mat, maybe squeezing the mat gently between your feet. The next time you come up, hold steady, Tuck your back toes under, high crescent. Find your balance. Sort of press your back toes down, straighten your spine. Sweep your left arm down and behind you as you reach your right arm forward in the twist. Reverse, coming up, fingers pointing up. Resetting here and again, right arm comes down left arm goes backward parallel both palms facing the same direction add the gaze maybe looking behind you 
Inhale, reset. Lift your fingertips up. Gaze up, a slight tilt to the left will open up your hip flexor. Inhale, lift, look down, reach for the ground, right hand down, bring your back foot further backward, lift your left arm up in the twist lunge. Spread your fingers, plug your shoulder blade into your spine, press your straight arm further back, Look down to the ground, both fingertips down. Drop your back knee to the floor, low lunge. Untuck your back toes. Build your lunge by coming up to a straight spine. Engage the back glute that will open up the front of your hip. That's the target. Bring your arms to goal post arms. Spread your fingers wide. Press your elbows back. Gaze up. Exhale, tuck your chin. Bring your elbows and palms together. I know that left leg is on fire. Hold for one more breath in. You can do anything for one breath. And that is what your yoga teaches you. Release your fingertips down to the ground. Straighten your front leg half splits. Maybe moving back to low lunge. This easy back and forth movement, getting the blood flow back into your front leg. If you want, you can hold statically in your half splits. Wiggle your front foot forward. So you'll have this right triangle. Your back thigh is perpendicular to the floor. Your front leg is diagonal to the floor. Adjust your heart and chest over your leg. Lower down maybe a half an inch. Keep your neck long. Flex and point through your feet, your foot. Bring both hands to the inside of your foot. Swing your leg backward, press backward, take a break, or move into an optional vinyasa through downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Chaturanga knees up or down. Upward facing dog. Pressing back to child's pose. Take a breather or take an inversion or maybe just rest. Listening to your body is the most important part of yoga practice and it's one we celebrate as teachers. We love to see students doing their own thing, listening to their inner teacher, their Anya, inner wisdom. Pressing to downward dog when you're ready. Lifting up. And it is a lovely day. You are here, you are on your mat. Rock side to side. Gaze forward, tiptoe to your hands. Inhale, come up halfway, as if you're diving. Wiggle your toes, look down, forward fold, exhale. Slowly coming up, press your straight arms backward. Notice how the strong muscles beneath your shoulder blades are helping you open up your heart space a little bit more. Palms together, thumbs to heart center. Pivot to face your screen, toes out, heels in. Drop your seat down, bring your hands on your hips. And think about the infinity symbol or figure eight and see if you can move your hips in that way from side to side. Articulating the spine through this movement may not be natural for any of you, but hey, it's virtual classes and nobody can see you. So this is, this is great to practice at home. And if the figure eight isn't working for you because of hip replacement or what, what have you, just circles one direction and the opposite direction. If you don't move a joint through its fullest range of motion, you tend to lose that range over time. The next time you circle, hold steady, bring your hands behind your back, maybe stack your hands, reaching for opposite elbows, if that's okay. Tuck your chin to your chest, keep your spine straight. Roll your head from side to side. Getting into the neck. The next time your chin comes to your chest, 
Release your hands, straighten your legs, feel the sweet relief. Open your arms to a T. Turn your toes to face the opposite side of your mat. Setting up for pyramid, second side. Sweep your arm down, both toes in a cross country ski position. Palms facing forward. Bend your elbows, press your bent arms backward. As your elbows come in, straighten your elbows and then splaying your fingers wide open, palm fully open, bring your arms back up. Again, more elbow bends to straight arm. Keep your front leg straight. I notice I keep bending, but try that straight leg variation, helping you with balance. Another thing that will help you with balance as you move your arms one more time is to use your feet, either squeezing them toward one another or pressing one forward and one backward. Hold your pyramid, palms face one another, bend your front knee, you are set for warrior one. Belly facing forward, back foot at 45 degrees, forward fold, exhale. Inhale up, a little humble warrior. And the beauty of your yoga practice is the poses, as they're called out, are sending your brain a subliminal message. You are a warrior. We all need a little more humility. So you're strong, balanced, ready for action. Inhale as you come up, set up for high crescent. Tuck your back toes under, scoot your foot further backward, your front knee will be at 90. Sweep your right arm down, out to the side. Create a T shape with your arms and then back. Keep your gaze where you feel comfortable. Maybe second time through, you take the twist and your gaze will follow. Lock your gaze down. Where your gaze goes, your body goes. Raise your arms up. Bring your fingertips down to the ground. Wiggle your foot further backward. Drop your left fingertips to the ground. Right arm comes up. Twist lunge. Spread your fingers wide. Press your straight arm backward. It doesn't have to look like mine. It's just the intention, building strength over time. Maybe gaze up. Bring your fingertips down to the ground. Drop your back knee. Untuck your toes, low lunge. So in your low lunge, coming up, will initiate a stretch in the psoas and hip flexors. It's important for you to know that because when this area of your body is tight, it causes low back pain. Raise your arms up to goal posts. A little cat cow. Bringing elbows and palms together, tuck your chin. Inhale, open your arms to goal posts. Squeeze your shoulder blades together, gaze up. One more time. You can feel the strength building in your stabilizing leg. Engage your back glute to help. Gaze up. Fingertips slowly come to the ground. Straighten your front leg, half splits. Wiggle it forward until you have a nice triangle, a nice right triangle. And if you forgot your geometry, no worries. You're doing well. <laughs> you can bend forward and back for a little of your own personal flow getting deeper into the hip or if you prefer the static hold by all means take the static hold if you've been moving and would like to hold steady straighten your front leg press your heel down keep your ankle flexed lift through your spine maybe belly drops toward your thigh Bring both hands to the inside of your ankle. Swing your leg back. Feels so good, cat cow, or maybe hip circles, pressing your hips away from the screen, back to your heels and toward the screen and reverse. Big sweeping hip circles, opening up the piriformis and the outer hip rotators. The next time your hips go backward, you can stay and rest in child's pose or press up to downward dog and complete another vinyasa. Everybody's energy levels are different. 
Adding and subtracting is the name of the game in yoga. Adjust your sails to the wind that's presented to you. And off the mat, that comes across as equanimity. You flow through life in a different way when your sails are adjusted constantly to the wind. Everybody join in downward facing dog. Gazing forward, inhale, lift just your right leg up, parallel to the ground, gaze forward and bring your foot forward, get it forward, stepping into warrior two, Warrior two. Gaze over your right fingertips. Step to the top of your mat into chair pose. Warrior two. Step your right foot back. Left foot forward. Open your arms. Flip one palm and reverse the flip on the other hand. You can see how this looks. This is like a twisting arm rotating your upper arm bone in your shoulder socket. As you move hands in opposite directions, you're creating neural pathways across your brain because of the confusion. Things aren't going the same way. Hold warrior two. Turn your toes forward to face the screen. Load your left knee into a side squat. As you load, Prepare to spring off and check your balance and reset. Spring and reset. See about getting a little bit more hang time. And as you get hang time, maybe you're ready for a balance pose. In the past, if you practice with me, you've practiced tree, but perhaps could you hold and build an eagle? Crossing left leg over right, left arm under right, holding eagle, squeeze everything center as if you're holding onto a tree or a pole. Open your arms to a T. Can you land into your side squat gently? This is acceleration and deceleration of the outer leg. So important for you. Let's try second side. Bend your right knee and loading off your right foot. See if you can balance. It will always be different. I will turn to face you. Loading, balancing. Notice your shoulders are getting tired. That's the centrifugal force working on your delt. Awesome. Hold. Crossing right leg slowly over left. Right arm under left, build your eagle or practice tree, it doesn't matter. Hold, squeeze in, find and lock down on your drishti here. The thing holding your gaze, an immovable object. Open your arms to a T and gently come back to the side squat. Step your feet together. Bring your palms together, thumbs to heart center. Turn. Inhale, open. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Touch the ground. A mindful vinyasa. Or simply step back to child's pose. Pressing back. Coming up, face the screen. So stretching your quads, sit back on your heels. And if this is not feeling great for your knees, very common in our world, take your blanket. Roll it up and place it between your knees. You'll only be here for a few breaths. 
If this is still not working for your body, then come to easy seat. Your quads are still getting a stretch. Wiggle your big toes together, squeeze your knees together. Lift up slightly, bottom comes off your heels and then lower. Do that once more, activating your quads and then relaxing your quads. You can stay here, this is a very nice stretch or maybe walk your fingertips behind you. Keep your chin tucked. Some of you may feel ready to lift your knees off the ground and stretch your ankles. If this is not working for your body, please come to child's pose, which accomplishes the same thing. This variation is a simply a deeper stretch for your shins and opens up the ankle joint to keep a fully healthy foot and ankle. If you'd like to practice your balance, squeeze your thighs together and bring your palms to prayer. Again, how are you adjusting your sails? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you wishing this was over? Can you let the sheet out, the rope out just a little bit more? and take advantage of the wind. Release your fingertips. Come forward into table pose. Tantramasana. Slap your feet on the floor. Shake it. Tuck your toes. Maybe press backward. And release. I'm sure you feel the prana. I know I do. So moving to the yin portion of class yin addresses tightness in your connective tissue, which inhibits full range of motion in your joints. So we'll use the wall for yin. It's a really lovely way to take advantage of gravity. So find a clear space against the wall and we'll begin with figure four stretch. So this is a hip opener one of one of the nicest ways to open up your hips without hurting your knees so i will back up against the wall with your hip against the wall this is a semi elegant way to get into the, into the pose walk your hands backward lower your body down at the same time pivot your legs up and then scooch your body away. If you're on a mat, that, that may be a little hard because of the stickiness, until your knees are at 90 degrees. It's like you're the shape of a chair. So if you know you've got tight hips, scooch away another inch or two. Cross your right ankle on top of your left knee. If you don't feel much, Reset and scooch closer to the wall. If it's too intense, wiggle away. So, adjust your body so that your shoulder blades are flat on the ground. This is a passive hip opener. If you're not feeling much and would like to come to something more deep, practice pigeon. And if you don't or haven't practiced pigeon, stay right where you are. The closer you scooch, the wall, the more you will feel the work in your outer hip. Pressing your right leg into and toward the wall will activate the outer hip and deepen the stretch. 
You can also use your right hand and apply gentle pressure. Deepen your breathing. Relax your brow. The space between your eyes. Your cheek. Throat. And shoulders. You can deepen the work here. If you'd like, you can slide your hands underneath your body, palms down. And the higher up your fingers come up your spine, the more you'll notice the stretch in your shoulders. You can also lift your heel off the wall and stay here, adding a little bit more resistance to open up the right hip. your heel is lifted, think about pressing your tailbone down at the same time. If you have an active mind, it is helpful to sometimes count how long it takes you to inhale and then counting the exhalation, seeing if it's about twice as long. It's the breathing pattern that is like a balm to your nervous system. Three more conscious breaths. Slowly lower your heel if it was lifted. Uncross legs. Rock your body from one side to the other, releasing your hands if they were tucked under. Flip your palms up. Squeeze your shoulder blades together so that your shoulder blades are flat on the ground. Open your jaw, stretch through your facial muscles. Coming into second side. See how it goes with left ankle on top of right thigh. And then adjust accordingly, either moving closer or further away from the wall. Flex your ankle. Spread your toes. Paying attention to each separate digit. Place your palm on the inside of your knee and use gentle pressure here.
back to the generous diaphragmic belly breath. are closed, visualize as you inhale. You can see your belly rise, but notice how your pelvic floor and your diaphragm drop slightly to accommodate the breath like a bellows. And then as you exhale, see how your pelvic floor and diaphragm lift together to expel the breathing, the breath, the oxygen. If you'd like, place your palms on the ground, slide your palms under your low back or your tailbone, or maybe even a little higher up your back. Variation of broken wing. You may notice your shoulder blade winging in the back. It's okay. Just let it be. And if you'd like to go deeper in the figure four stretch, you can lift your heel off the wall. So place a more acute external rotation of your femur bone. Slowly press your tailbone down to the ground as you press your ankle into your knee, keeping your heel lifted, relax. And again. Relax. Take three. Conscious breaths, either counting or observing the mechanics. Uncross your leg. Rock your body from one side to release one wing and then the opposite. Flip your palms up. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Nice flat shoulder blades on your mat. And stretch your legs up for full legs up the wall. You may need to adjust your body closer to the wall. After the external hip opening, it may be nice for you to practice a wide leg variation of legs up the wall. If this is no good for your knees, you can bend your knees, taking a happy baby variation. Both feel good, both are groin opening. Let your feet flop. Rock your head from right to left.
you are in a place of healing. No matter what has happened or what is coming, you are healthy and whole right where you are, cradled, bodies relaxed. All systems are quiet. You are equipped for the wind, whichever way it blows. Using your hands, bring your thighs toward one another. Your legs are strong, but sometimes they need help too. Slide your feet down the wall. Move away from the wall. Coming into a bridge. Your knees at 90, lift your tailbone off the ground, keep your chin slightly tucked. Have a lot of nice extension in this variation with your feet on the wall. Lower your spine. Maybe one more. Bring your feet to the ground, roll to your side, stretch your arms out in front of you, open your left arm up, arms to a T, if your knees are pointing right or left, it doesn't matter, you're in a nice twist. Bring your arms together, gather your knees in, and switch sides. Your arms out in front. Open your arms to a T. Easy twist here. Roll back. Lying on your side. Slowly roll to a comfortable seat. Facing forward. As you take your seat, straighten your spine. Notice how your heart lifts in response. Bring your palms together, thumbs on your lifted heart. An Anjali Mudra, a gesture of gratitude, passion for self and others. May the love, light, kindness, and compassion that radiates all around you shine straight out through your lifted heart. Om Shanti Peace. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining today's practice. My name is Becky, and I'm so happy to see you today. I'll be looking forward to seeing you again and practicing together next time.